elements in Cineroar. Groudon, Xerneas, Tapafini, and Venusaur. Yeah, Venusaur, really cool Pokemon there on Brandon's team that, of course, we have to point out, but Wolfie also using a Snorlax. That's not something that we've seen too much in this format. Saw a little bit of it throughout the World Championships in day one, but uh, definitely cool to see it appear once again. A lot of interesting dynamics here. Wolf running the Rayquaza, or Rayquaza Lunala duo, and uh, Brandon using a more standard Xerneas Groudon. So uh, I think, first of all, I'm sure Tapufini and Rayquaza will be coming out for Wolfie for all these games. Uh, potential to kind of just nuke the Groudon with a water type attack is always one of the uh, best reasons to use Tapufini alongside Rayquaza. I am really hoping to see the Venusaur. I actually think it could be quite good in this matchup, if it, especially if it's running something like Sleep Powder. Uh, that actually can still put the Rayquaza to sleep despite the Misty Terrain being up, and being able to shut down Rayquaza in this matchup will be absolutely essential. I also wouldn't be too surprised to see Wolfie try to bring Stack Attack into this matchup, maybe try to set up Trick Room, try to beat out the Xerneas on the opposing side. Yeah, you do have to watch out with bringing that Venusaur, making sure that you have control of the weather. But it's tough with Rayquaza, a bit easier to deal with if it's Mega Rayquaza, so uh, you know, you have to be able to position that just correctly if you want to do go for those sleep powders. Uh, depending on what Brandon's Venusaur does, though, obviously there are a couple variants. You know, a lot, a lot of players actually opt for uh, Focus Sash just to be able to survive yep. one hit. And of course, a very powerful, fast Bloom Doom is also dangerous. So, what variant did Brandon here? As we jump now into the round. Incineroar and Salamence leads for Brandon as Stack Attack and Incineroar leads for Wolf. All right, so obviously Intimidate's going all around right now. Uh, Brandon getting the slightly better end of that trade, being able to put these two very physical, or Stack Attack, which is a very physical Pokemon, uh, down to minus two attack. Uh, now it's Rock Slides would be doing considerably less damage. Also important to know that Wolfie's Incineroar does, uh, Intimidate goes after Brandon's. Yeah, so uh, that could either indicate a speed tie or outright that Brandon's is faster. Yeah, so we'll have to see what Wolfie prioritizes here. Typically with Stack Attacka, you do want to try to get up Trick Room as quickly as possible. Uh, Brandon right now is kind of in a awkward spot. Uh, Salamence, if it's running something like Ur Earthquake, might actually be able to do some decent damage to Stack Attacka, even through the Intimidate. Can scout out for the potential Shookaberry. I think Brandon might want to try to pivot out either through a U-turn or just a hard switch into Groudon if he has it in the back, because Groudon's obviously an incredible switch and into Stack Attack and Incineroar and kind of mitigates the fact that a Trick Room could go up. But uh, Wolfie obviously has a bunch of options right now as well. Could go for a fake out of his own, but wouldn't be too surprised to maybe just see a straight U-turn or a switch out, and he is going to switch out that Incineroar. Yep, a straight switch, not going to wait for a U-turn. Uh, switches that Incineroar for top of Fini, brings out the Misty Terrain, as well as possibly threaten that Salamence with an Icy Wind to kind of just get some damage out there as Wolf also decides to switch out Stack Attack for a Rayquaza, so... Uh, Rayquaza takes the field, and that airlock not going to come into play just yet, but will if that ground on Whoa. and Ooh, Salamence Whoa. reveals that it does have Earthquake, so Brandon going to Earthquake into his own Incineroar here, doing some decent damage to it. A uh, little, not even that much damage to that top of Fini as Incineroar on Brandon's side uses U turn into that top of Fini slot. So, not much damage dealt over on Wolf's side, and that's one thing you had to watch out when you face off against Wolf. Wolf is a very great defensive player. He will try to mitigate as much damage as he possibly can here as Brandon now tries to pivot out that Incineroar, save that Intimidate for it later on, and Brandon sends out Xerneas. Yeah, Xerneas is definitely a pretty good Pokemon to have out right now, though, of course, threatening both the uh, Rayquaza immensely with Fairy-type attacks, but uh, Tapu Fini can't really do too much against it. I really like the attempt there by Brandon. I think uh, if you're able to get a lot of damage onto a stack attack of this early on in the game, that's absolutely critical. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't get it, but I actually really like the decision to not Mega Evolve there as well, keeping the Intimidate. And I think Cycling Intimidates is really essential in beating the Rayquaza and the stack attack. Yep, Rayquaza on Wolf's side switches out, and Sinor are taking the field here. Another Intimidate on that Salamence on Brandon's side, so it won't be doing that much damage at all at two stages of decreased attack. Not going to matter on that Xerneas as Top of Fini on Wolf's side, so. <laughs> But two double switches on Wolf's side, not even trying to deal damage right now. Uh, possibly, ex nope, that Salamence is actually going to stay in Mega Evolve here as Stack Attacker takes the field for that top Rufini. So Stack Attacker really enjoy facing off against Xerneas because Xerneas can't do much damage to it while that Stack Attacker can punish it with a very powerful Gyro Ball as Salamence uses Double Edge, hits into that Stack Attacker slot quadruple resist. Oh. Nine whole hit points of damage, <laughs> not much done at all as Xerneas uses Dazzling Gleam here, getting some spread damage on a stack attacker and Incineroar. So again, that Dazzling Gleam did not do that much damage to that Incineroar, possibly indicating what item it's holding. Yeah, Wolfie really playing super defensively right now, but paying off perfectly, kind of baiting attacks from Brandon, and that certainly has paid off. The Salamence most definitely will want to switch out even a 
I got Earthquake, obviously hits that attacker for decent damage. We're at minus two attack. Not really sure how much it really will do, especially considering uh, Shaka Berry could be an item on stack attack. So I think Brandon here will probably want to pivot out into the Incineroar. His Xerneas is definitely out in kind of an awkward position right now. Uh, and I think Wolfie might now try to set up a potential Trick Room. I think uh, Tapu Fini is really, really good against Brandon's team. And so if he is able to kind of slow down the pressure from Salamence and Xerneas, certainly will be able to exert a lot of pressure, uh, potential knockouts just with Tapu Fini. Salamence who does switch out. Yeah, Brandon forces switch out that Salamence. Two, chase, two, two stages of decreased attack just is not going to cut it as Groudon takes the field for Brandon's side, does exert a lot of pressure over onto Incineroar and Stack Attack on Wolf's side as it reverts to its primal form. But, you know, Stack Attack does have some opportunities to be moving here as uh, the Desolate Land takes effect. Again, that extreme harsh sunlight can easily just be negated by that Rayquaza in the back that's hiding with on Wolf's bench as Xerneas switches out and Incineroar takes the field. So again, another good Intimidate to be able to kind of weaken the damage output of Stack Attacka and Incineroar. So that's so going to be important. many double switches. Yeah, a lot of switching here. And again, board position is so important for both these players as Incineroar uses U-turn into that Groudon slot, allowing Wolf to again switch. So a possible Trick Room and a possible Top of Fini switch and a Rayquaza switch the next turn will actually allow Wolf to open up on that Groudon. Yeah, uh, really, really nice. I think positioning by both players, Wolf definitely getting the slightly better end of it, though, because he's able to use that U-turn last. So Tapu Fini, like you mentioned, is able to come in now, exerts immense amount of pressure against that Groudon to see how the Tapu Fini and the Groudon are trained to see which one will go first. Of course, there is a potential for a fake out this turn, but like you mentioned, one of the biggest plays here right now is the opportunity to uh, go for the switch out into Rayquaza and go straight for a water type attack into Groudon that will just nuke it. Scald, Hydro Pump, Water Z move, all potential attacks that could just kind of eliminate the Groudon. The upside for Brandon right now is he does have some fake out pressure right now, and Stack Attack, of course, can't do very much damage against Groudon. So, uh, that being said, Stack Attack can still maybe go for a Rock Slide, get some decent damage off uh, against Incineroar. Just uh, Tapu Fini won't be able to do anything unless Stack Attack does switch out into Rayquaza. Incineroar switches out, no fake out, so this could be. Uh, dangerous. Actually, that Sack Attacker would have switched first, so it's not actually going to switch at all, just staying in for some damage here as Xerneas takes the field for that Incineroar as Groudon on Brandon's side switches out as well. So backpedaling here, trying to get better position, uh, possibly expecting that play coming from Wolf's end, but Salamence takes the field here as Stack Attack actually just protects this turn, not going to switch or go on the offense just yet as Topofini also protects, just scouting for that fake out. Yeah, uh, Brandon going for, I mean, so many double switches this game, but nice play there by Brandon, kind of maybe, I, I think what he was probably expecting, like you mentioned, a stack attack of switching out into the Rayquaza, and then maybe trying to bait the water type attack into the Salamence. Either way, he at least does burn a turn of Trick Room, and now he could potentially double protect to stall out another turn. He can even go for a switch back out into the Incineroar. That means that Tapu Fini always exerts pressure uh, with the potential water type attack, so... Yeah, I, I really like the switch there by Brandon kind of calling the Wolf's passive play there or the potential for the switch into Rayquaza and it pays off. You still have to deal with the next couple of turns of Trick Room and it will be tough for him to really get some damage down. So I think the goal of the game for him is really to be able to eliminate the Tapu Fini. Once that's out of the way, the Groudon can kind of really go through Wolf's team. Another Intimidate uh, going to be used here. Incineroar switching back in. The Intimidate is going to be pretty big on that stack attack as its attack drops and Salamence just uses his turn to protect, does not want to get hit with a possible uh, Icy Wind or a Rock Slide from that Top of Fini as stack attack uses Rock Slide here, connects uh, with that Salamence Protect and hits into that Incineroar, so it is still super effective damage and stack attack has a, a decent attack stat here as Incineroar uh, loses quite a bit of health no and Fini uses Moonblast right into that Salamence, so again, sorry, uh, you know, Icy Wind is an option, but so is Moonblast, just to go for some uh, same type attack boost damage. Yeah, Moonblast consistent damage, our Rock Slide, despite being at minus two attack, still doing so much damage to Incineroar, and no Berry there is an absolutely huge reveal there for Incineroar. Had the Berry proc, would have been able to heal all the way back up, but now Stack Attack up potentially in KO range from another Rock Slide. Uh, some key reveals there as well. This Tapu Fini actually is carrying Moonblast and Protect, so a little bit more offensive than the more support-oriented Tapu Finis we typically see with moves like Reflect, Light Screen, Icy Wind, uh, Nature's Madness. So uh, this Tapu Fini definitely a little bit more offensive, and once again, I think Brandon's goal really is to be able to knock this out uh, as quickly as possible so that the Groudon can kind of go through Wolfie's team. But uh, the two turns of Trick Room gone. Uh, Incineroar now has the potential, of course, to go for a Fake Out into one of the two Pokemon, but that does mean that Tapu Fini will get a free attack off. So still a kind of tricky position, I'd say for both players who so are time running really low oh, there. Yeah, almost hit zero there as the moves are locked in. Top of Fini switches out. Wolf switches in Rayquaza. 
Uh, again, that airlock ability is going to be very important to face off against Brandon's Groudon. And again, it's a battle for board position right now as Taka Taka actually protects again. Uh, you know, does not want to get KO'd from a possible Earthquake as Incineroar uses U-Turn into that stack attack -a slot as Salamence uses Double Edge, oh, does hit what a call. into that top of Phoenix slot, does good damage to that Rayquaza. That is a lot of damage right there. Oh, but enough to berry. activate the berry, so Rayquaza heals right back up. 50% of its hit points in a pinch thanks to that Figgy Berry. Yeah, that was an excellent play there by Brandon, though. He just double edged to Tapu Fini in front of a stack attack uh, and Tapu Fini under Trick Room. Really tough call there to make, but of course, maybe predicting Wolfie's slightly more defensive play gets a nice call there. Still kind of an awkward position this turn, though. It is the last in our Trick Room. Rayquaza, giving, uh, given that it has the Berry there, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Swords Dance variant we've seen a lot of. So Stack Attack might be content uh, clicking something like Rock Slide, and Rayquaza maybe goes for a Swords Dance. Uh, because the Incinera did U-turn into Stack Attack and not into Rayquaza, no extra Intimidate off here and no Switch once again. So let's see what the Incinera goes for. Rayquaza Mega Evolves now, bringing in that Delta Stream. Uh, which actually helps out that Salamence over on Brandon's side to reduce yeah. the amount of damage that that Rock Slide does. So uh, possibly not even going to go for a Rock Slide, but instead Salamence protects itself this turn. Uh, does not want to take a Rock Slide here. As Stack Attack it does use Rock Slide, hits into that Salamence Protect again. And miss. And oh, oh it misses! dodges it! Oh, that's so huge! And, and here comes move. the Darkest Larry, or sorry, no, a moot, <laughs> malicious moot <laughs> salt from that Incineroar. So this is going to oh. be some big damage being dealt out here before that Rayquaza even moves. So where is this malicious moonsault going to land into? Probably that Rayquaza slot to try to get that KO. Absolutely huge miss there. Gets so much damage. This might even get the knockout. A knockout here would be absolutely deadly here uh, because it means that the Groudon now won't be able to get the knockout by the top. He doesn't get the knockout. Big oh, damage. It does. Oh my goodness. And Sinwar slamming straight into that Mega Rayquaza and gets the KO as the Delta Stream disappears and the Twisted Dimensions return to normal as well. Yeah, that is a, that is a, a That's a bad miss right there from that stack attack. Absolutely. I mean, if Rayquaza especially was going for a sword stance there that could have totally pulled the position back into Wolfie's favor but a really really unfortunate miss there I think I mean there's really not no way around it right you just have to kind of hope that the rocks like connects a big reveal there from the Incinera showing that it's not the Assault Vest not the Berry but in fact the Incinium Z being able to do so much damage there I mean uh, this was obviously uh, it first came from Brandon's incredible play double edging into the top of Fini doing all that initial damage enough so that Incinera could get the knockout but it's not looking too great for Wolfie right now Brandon's Groudon now should be able to just close out this game. I really don't think Incineroar, a Stack Attack, and a Tapu Fini without weather control from Rayquaza can really be able to pull this one off. That's going to wow. be very tough right there. And again, you know, that Rayquaza on Wolf's team provides so much support and offensive, uh, you know, capabilities in, with its support. You know, that Delta Stream and just being able to Sword Stance up and going for a powerful Dragon Ascent. And here comes an Earthquake from that Salamence. Hits into his own Incineroar, hits Stack Attack, and no Shuka Berry there uh, because of the Life Orb item. And Incineroar on Brandon's side actually gets knocked out. And this could possibly be an easy. Uh, this could be a KO on that Salamence if Stack Attack goes for a Rock Slide, but could also just go for a Trick Room. Yeah, kind of surprised to see Brandon uh, maybe not conserve the Incineroar for Intimidates, but maybe he's just confident like he can close out this way at uh, this game at this point with the Groudon, just clicking Precipice Blades, especially because Tapu Fini now no longer will be able to use Water-type attacks off against the Groudon. So, yeah, absolutely huge miss earlier there with the Stack Attack. Uh, uh, not to take any credit away from Brandon, though, I do think he's actually played really, really well. Um, and the double edge play into Tapu Fini, that switch on to Rayquaza, certainly was a very impressive player. Under Trick Room against the Tapu Fini and a Stack Attack under Trick Room. I yep. mean, that is a bold play, yep. and it paid off because of that extra chip damage and activating that berry on that Rayquaza. So Groudon and Tapu Fini take the field. Groudon on Brandon's side, Wolf sending in that Tapu Fini. So Trick Room is up, but as you've mentioned, you know, there just isn't anything that can deal that much damage to the to Brandon's Groudon. No, not at all. I mean, you can Psycho and Intimidate, sure. Uh, the Stack Attack has Wide Guard. I'm actually not sure uh, Wolf would even want to reveal the Wide Guard if he's running that, just because I just don't see a way that he beats the Groudon unless the Incineroar can do, like, very consistent damage off against Groudon. I mean, perhaps you go for, like, Rock Slide flinches consistently, but uh, the key issue is that Stack Attack, of course, is Intimidated, so I'm not even sure Rock Slide would get a knockout right now. Uh, I would have liked to see Brandon maybe switch out earlier. Right, here's the first Rock Slide. Let's see if we see any into uh, flinches. Rock Slide connects on a Salamence and Groudon. Salamence and Groudon don't take that much damage at all. Again, that Life Orb is some sort of a pseudo counter onto that stack attack. And here is a Moon Blast from that top of Hits in that Groudon. Does not do much damage at all. 
does get a special attack drop, though, as Groudon uses Press of his Blades and connects with both Pokemon. So Stack Attack gets KO'd. And how much damage is this going to do to the top of Fini that is much oh. more offensive? Uh, brings it down to a little under 25% of its remaining hit points. So you know, that's, that's always good information to, to know as Salamence flinches. Not going to matter too much here because it uh, looks like Brandon has all the pieces to seal the deal here in game. Yeah, I mean, I, Wolfie's still playing it out, and for good reason. You know, if you get two flinches, um, you see the Rock Slide and Moonblast was still actually able to do around 40% of damage or so, so two flinches means that maybe another stack attack or Rock Slide can't get the knockout. The odds there were obviously quite slim, but uh, there definitely was a win condition there for Wolfie. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it, this kind of speaks to where I was kind of analyzing the matchup earlier. Like, Tabu Fini is just such a critical Pokemon in this matchup. It matches up so nicely against Salamence, against Groudon as well. Um, but if the Rayquaza is eliminated, then Tabu Fini cannot use its water type attacks against Groudon. And Incineroar, Stack Attack, and Tabu Fini without uh, the Rayquaza out just really can't touch Groudon at all. Yep, and Groudon and Brandon side protects itself here. Uh, not going to want to take a fake out and another Moonblast as Salamence also protects. So really just double protecting here to burn that fake out turn from Wolf's side of the field. Yep. Uh, but again, you know, Brandon has all the pieces. Wolf does not have much offensive pressure right now at all. Uh, you know, just going for that Moonblast in that Salamence protect. But even then, that Moonblast would have to try to hit that ground on like 20 times at this point. And it looks like Wolf is ready to throw in the towel here. Uh, Wolf got as much information as he really wanted. Uh, probably was just... Uh, yeah, just trying to fish for information. Now you know that that's a physical Groudon. Yep. Uh, and exactly how much damage that Groudon is going to do to your Tapu Fini yep. with a split damaged Precipice Blades. Yeah, wow. I mean, I have really great game played by both players. Just obviously very unfortunate about the uh, miss there onto the stack attack. Uh, uh, would have allowed Rayquaza to survive and maybe even get a potential sword stance off, and that could have been game-changing from that point in the game. But obviously, there are some RNG factors in Pokemon. I think uh, out of all the players I know, Wolfie is definitely one of the best in terms of keeping his composure, staying calm. He's been in this position so many times before. He's made it through so many times. So kind of have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, I think he definitely can go back and think the Pokemon I brought in this game were pretty good. Like, they did what they needed to. I uh, just got a little unfortunate with the miss. I think, like, Snorlax kind of a tricky Pokemon to bring into this matchup. I'm not sure it's really doing too much for him. I think Lunala definitely can have some viability, especially if you maybe potentially lead with the Lunala. Uh, has the potential, uh, obviously, to go for a Tailwind or a Trick Room. It's just that Tabu Fini, I, I think, for Quaza almost always come into this matchup. Like, it, you just can't not bring them because otherwise the Groudon matchup is pretty much non existent. And Cinder is so good for U turn and Intimidate pressure, so then you kind of bring one of the Lunala in the stack attack. Uh, I think from Brandon's end, uh, I actually think Venusaur still could be a really cool pick. I want to see it a lot, but uh, the Pokemon he brought in that last matchup are certainly quite strong, especially given that he does have Earthquake on Salamence, which of course does a lot. Uh, uh, it's able to do some pretty good damage against the stack attack. Uh, so yeah, I think to, for Brandon to beat Wolfie, uh, he has to make a lot of these reads on when he's going to switch out. And I think that last turn he made one really excellent call, double edging the top of Fini, the turn that he switched out into Quasal. Seriously, a really great prediction there. You have to kind of be able to weave in attacks whenever possible. Yep. Uh, you know, you have to try to take advantage of Wolf's defensive play and find those openings. So you have to be very methodical and very analytical as to when you decide to go on the offense because if you are incorrect, you could allow Wolf to set up much better board. Oh. And it looks like Brandon's going to lead with Venusaur and Groudon. So a very hyper offensive. Oh, boy. <laughs> Versus a Tapu Fini. So... <laughs> Wolf leads stack, stack attack in top of Phoenix, so these leads on Brandon's side right now kind of just say, hey, I'm ready to get two KOs, especially since that is not a Shookaberry stack attack. -a. That is such a strong lead here from Brandon, and I think it's kind of a nightmare to go up against if you're Wolfie. I mean, like you mentioned, uh, Venusaur, obviously. I, I really wanted to see Venusaur, and I think um, that's an excellent adjustment by Brandon. I think he realizes that he got a little bit lucky to win that last game, and going with the same lead probably won't work. It realizes that Venusaur is a really, really good Pokemon against the Pokemon that Wolfie brought that last game. So this is going to be tough. The upside for Wolfie is, of course, he does have the Misty Terrain up. So I wouldn't be surprised maybe to see a switch out, stack attack into Rayquaza, and maybe protect the top of Fini this first turn. Absolutely, as Rayquaza takes the field here for the stack attack of Again, that airlock ability is going to go ahead and shut off that chlorophyll ability on Brandon's Venusaur. And there it is, a protect from the top of Phoenix. So Wolf now just has to try to find a way to position himself. And it looks like it's going to be the Bloom Doom variant of Venusaur here. Going to activate that Grassian Z and try to deal some damage. But of course, through that top of Phoenix protect, not going to do much damage at all. 
Yeah, uh, Wolfie playing it safe there, but that's actually so big, he kind of turns it around completely because now there's no focus sash potential on the Venusaur with air lock up. Uh, you actually be able to outspeed the Venusaur and just knock it out with the Dragon Ascent, and now uh, there is the threat. And wow, that still does some pretty good damage there through the Protect. Yeah, so of course Rayquaza can go for that Dragon Ascent as Groudon uses Precipice Blades. Uh, not gonna do any damage at all thanks to that Protect and of course Rayquaza's Flying type. Yeah, so I think Wolfie maneuvering himself out of what was a very bad position. Of course, if Brandon wanted to play super aggressive, could have gone for, a, for example, like a Sleep Powder into Rayquaza if he's running that. If he is and that actually connected, that would have been absolutely brutal for Wolf. But Brandon uh, just playing a little bit safe that first turn, uh, and Wolfie manages to maneuver out of what was a very, very bad position. Now he's actually in a pretty good spot. Puts on Dragon Ascent pressure against Venusaur. Tapu Fini puts on pressure against the Groudon. I think Brandon here might want to pivot out into Incineroar, for example, if he does have that in the back, switch out the Venusaur into Incineroar. Groudon's still kind of in an awkward spot, though. I think if Incineroar and Xerneas are the last two Pokemon for Brandon, you might want to consider a double switch, so then you can fake out in Geomancy the following turn. Yeah, so now Brandon is on his defense side of the uh, board position battle. Uh, switches out Venusaur for that Incineroar. Going to be very important to intimidate here onto that Rayquaza, so Dragon Ascent won't be able to get the KO on that Incineroar, but remember, this Incineroar is carrying that Incineum Z, so it won't be able to heal anything back as Groudon now, forced to switch out oh. as well, and it's going to be Salamence, so Brandon foregoing his second restricted Pokemon, bringing three support Pokemon, as that Intimidate is going to be big as well onto that opposing Rayquaza, as Rayquaza on Wolf's side uses Dragon Ascent, not Mega Evolving, just going to use it and hit that Incineroar for a negligible amount of damage with Rayquaza's defenses dropping Ooh, here. Oh, there's the Z. And, yep, here comes the Hydro Vortex from that top of Fini hitting into what is most likely that Groudon slot. Let's see, he might have aggressively targeted down Venusaur, uh, but yeah, Groudon, the presumed option. Yeah, so really interesting, no Xerneas there in the back, but I definitely understand that. Who does it go into? Okay, it does go into Salamence. So uh, being able to burn that Z is absolutely huge. And once again, for uh, so so for Brandon, and oh my god, that actually yeah, still big damage, damage right there, yeah. That. Um, but the upside now is he's gotten uh, two Intimidates off against that Rayquaza, so it's not doing very much damage. I'm not even sure a Dragon Ascent would be able to knock out Salamence. You have Fake Out pressure as well here, so maybe you can go for a Fake Out onto Tapu Fini. Uh, could potentially set up a Tailwind or maybe just launch some Double Edges. Confirms the item on the Tapu Fini as well. So, yeah, uh, both players, I think, kind of trading blow for blow right now. It's uh, tight. It's tight it, it right now. It is. Yeah, I mean, Brandon had a really good lead, and I think he could have maybe ran away with the game instantly if he made a little bit more of an aggressive prediction that first turn. Uh, maybe trying to catch Wolfie off guard with the Grass DMZ. Wolfie played a little bit more defensively and it pays off, but this is still anybody's game. Rayquaza switches out. Incineroar takes the field. Big Intimidate onto Brandon's side of the field here on that Salamence and that Incineroar. Uh, obviously had to switch out that Rayquaza with those defense drops. Don't want to be taking a double edge at all from an unintimidated Salamence as Salamence Mega Evolves here. Getting that air late ability. Going to try to dish out some damage with a very strong double edge right now, although it is intimidated as Salamence uses double edge, hits into that top of Fini slot actually, and top of Fini hangs on with 32 hit points. No fake out from that Incineroar as Moonblast from that top of Fini will be able to get the KO onto that Salamence, but top of Fini is low on health. That is dangerous as that is a very good counter to uh, Brandon's Groudon as ooh, a critical hit from Brandon's Incineroar onto Wolf's Incineroar as now Brandon gets to decide what to do. Yeah, I think if Brandon is able to knock out the Tapu Fini, um, then obviously Groudon is pretty well protected. If you can cycle in the Incineroar for some Intimidates, that'd be absolutely huge. Now he can bring out Venusaur actually next to this Groudon and it will have the speed advantage once again. So I actually really like Brandon's decision to bring the Mega Salamence here just for another Intimidate option. Uh, Mega Salamence obviously does a lot of damage to Tapu Fini as well. A little unfortunate critical hit there onto the Incineroar and uh, gets a little bit of extra damage off there. So this has been a really good game. I feel like Brandon definitely had the early lead advantage. Wolfie made a really great play to kind of get out of a really tricky position and now the game kind of feels relatively even. That being said, I do think it will be relatively difficult for Wolfie to win if the Tapu Fini goes down, and like you mentioned, it is very low. And Brandon sends out Incineroar and said, not that Venusaur. Uh, you know, you do have to respect that possible fake out and the switch. So Wolf has a lot of moving pieces right now that he can do uh, in order to try to take advantage of the board position. So Brandon not going to want to bring out that Venusaur just yet. Instead, has his own fake out support with his own Incineroar. And again, another Intimidate on the Incineroar on Wolf's side is also really nice. Yeah, the scary thing here is that with the Z-move committed from Tapu Fini, I'm not sure a Hydro Pump will knock out Incineroar with Air Lock Up. That is uh, definitely something that could be huge if the 
You know, if Incineroar is able to hang on, get a big Z move off, especially if it's not intimidated, that would be huge. This next turn is a little bit awkward. Both Incineroars have the potential to go for a fake out. Tapu Fini, of course, is looking to fish for a water type attack into the Groudon, but I'm sure uh, Brandon won't let it go off that easily. All right, here's the switch out. Incineroar probably going out into the Rayquaza. Yep, All right. So the airlock ability is active yet again. No sunlight is out onto the field, so water type attacks can be used as Groudon uses just oh, fire faster. Oh, hits in that Tapu Fini and gets the KO. Oh. So wow, big KO right there. So a big threat from Wolf's side of the field it has been eliminated as Incineroar on Brandon's side uses U-turn here, gonna chip away at that Rayquaza. So now this Venusaur will be able to come back in uh, and, well, just be able to possibly go for a Sleep Powder. But again, of course, that Rayquaza is faster and can go for a Dragon Ascent. So. Oh boy. Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, so uh, Groudon outspeeding Tapu Fini there isn't exactly shocking per se, but this Tapu Fini is obviously a little bit more offensive, and a lot of Groudons often uh, don't invest very much in speed whatsoever. So, Groudon is definitely not a speed Pokemon. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, Wolfie can most certainly still win this, especially with a big sword stance off from the Rayquaza right now. This game isn't over by any means this time. Uh, you know, last time around it was the Tapu Fini that uh, was around and Rayquaza fainted. I think you'd much rather have Rayquaza, obviously, being one of the main restricted Pokemon, having Sword Stance, though having your Berry. Uh, Brandon here, I mean, this next turn is going to be huge, right? You could go for, I think, a safe Fake Out into Venusaur and maybe a Sword Stance, but uh, Brandon can maybe work his way around that. I, I, the other tricky thing is if Wolfie Mega Evolves, then then Groudon can actually come back out and in, and the sun will be up, and Venus will be able to take advantage of that. So uh, for right now, Wolfie is pretty much really relying on Rayquaza to be able to sweep through. I think it absolutely needs to at least get a Dragon Dance off initially. Sword Dance. Or a Sword... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sword Dance. Sword yeah. Uh, Groudon on Brandon's side switches out, maybe expecting Wolf to Mega Evolve and also get a very important Intimidate onto Wolf's Incineroar and Rayquaza. Maybe try to mitigate the uh, boost that this Rayquaza can get off of a Sword Dance as well as Save that sunlight for later as Incineroar on Wolf's side uses Fake Out, hits into that Venusaur slot as Rayquaza does dance. use yep. the Swords Dance right there. So yeah. Smart play right there. Yeah, Rayquaza choosing not to Mega Evolve, also a smart play. I think this next turn, Wolf will probably want to just go for a Protect with Rayquaza, choosing not to Mega Evolve with it, and then the following turn can launch a big Dragon Ascent off. However, of course, one way Brandon can kind of work his way around that, and one potential cool play is you switch Venusaur out into Groudon, you turn the Incineroar back out into Venusaur, and then the next turn you can swap right back out into the Incineroar for another Intimidate, which brings the Rayquaza back to neutral. But uh, right now it's Wolf and his trusty Swords Dance Rayquaza. This is what he won the World Championships with it in 2016, and he's looking to extend this to a Game 3. Yeah, and Venusaur switches out now. Groudon is going to take the field, and... This is it. This is going to be a very crucial couple turns. These next two turns are going to be so important for board position right now as Groudon's Desolate Land doesn't matter at all thanks to that airlock. And there's Rayquaza to protect as you predicted, Aaron. Wow. Is there a U-turn coming out right now? Incineroar, just, fake, just out. fake out. Okay, just keep Ooh, that other the other in check. Though. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> so now this Rayquaza is out on the field. Uh, you know, didn't want to take a fake out from that Incineroar either, so... Tough calls right now, Aaron. This is so critical. No, this is really, really intense. I mean, Groudon will most certainly win against Incineroar and Rayquaza, or Incineroar and Sack Attack in the end game there. So uh, this next turn is also big, right? You can swap out, uh, Brandon can swap out his Incineroar out into Venusaur to potentially recycle for another Intimidate. I'm struggling to see how Brandon can really hit the Rayquaza for a lot of damage right now, though. It looks like Wolf is also trying to conserve some Intimidates on his end. Yeah, Incineroar on Wolf's side switches out Stack Attack. It takes the field, uh, just saving that Intimidate for later on as Rayquaza decides to Mega Evolve, bring out that Delta Stream, allowing a weather battle to fruition here. This is so intense. Oh boy, here we go. Rayquaza's Delta Stream activates. Groudon can activate Harsh Sunlight yet again if it switches out, but Rayquaza just goes straight for a Dragon Ascent, targets down the Incineroar, but looks like Brandon is smiling right here. What does Brandon know about this Incineroar? Incineroar does not hang on. Brandon possibly expecting that Incineroar to hang on? Let's see, is there an attack from Groudon here that can hit the Rayquaza? Otherwise, it must be over. No! Oh, what? Are you kidding me? He's dead, what? Is that going to knock out with the Midas? Yes! Oh my god, it does! What? <laughs> oh. That Groudon has something to hit that Rayquaza anyways with the Dragon Claw. Comes out of nowhere. Brandon's smiling not because that Incineroar fainted, but because he had something up his sleeve. That was the one move he needed. I have never seen that play out the way it did. Without the defense rep, I'm not sure to have gotten the knockout either. Oh my goodness! What? Brandon oh, smiling there, obviously very happy about that. 
It's not over yet, though. I mean, right now, I think Wolf's win condition is to set up Trick Room and try to get some big rock slides off. Of course, Stack Attack is not intimidated. Both of these Pokemon now, Wolf faint from a Precipice Blades. I think he needs to fake out the Groudon, hope for a Sleep Powder miss from Venusaur. If Venusaur is carrying it, let's see how this plays out. Yep. Incineroar uses Fake Out on the ground, and Venusaur uses oh, Sleep Powder. Oh, gets to sleep on that Stack Attack, and Brandon Meckley is so much closer to moving on to the top cut here at the World Championships. What Just a clutch hit his Precipice Blades now. And Brown flinches there. Stack Attack takes its first turn of sleep. Needs to connect. <laughs> Needs to connect a Precipice Blades, but he is so close. He can smell the top cut here at the World Championships. Oh my goodness, the Dragon Claw tech coming out. You know, we were both wondering, how is he going to be able to beat the Rayquaza? And now that Salamence is out on the way, hitting the Sleep Powder there. Definitely the best play possible. He, Wolfie at this point needs to hope for a Precipice Blades, Blades miss on Slow Stack Attack specifically. If it connects, the game is over. Uh, if it doesn't connect, he still needs to hope to wake up. So let's see, this might just be it. Yep, and Venusaur uses Leaf Storm, just getting more damage out on that field. Hits that stack attack. Oh, oh my goodness. The fence side. A critical hit, almost gets KO outright. Special attacks drop all around. And here comes Growl. Press, Press the blade. Blade. Oh Connects with goodness. both Pokemon. Gets the KO on that stack attack. Uh, does big damage at Incineroar. Incineroar barely hangs on, which is five hit points, but Wolf knows it. Wolf knows that a 5 hit point Incineroar cannot do much as Incineroar uses knockoff now. Not going to do much damage on that ground. Cannot knock off that Red Orb. Cannot knock off that Grass MZ onto that Venusaur either. And it looks like Wolf forfeits. And Brandon Meckley is going to move on to, to the top cut. Wow, I mean, Brandon showing why he has had such a tremendous performance throughout the last couple of days. He is going to be advancing on to the top cut. What an absolute amazing performance. Obviously heartbreaking for Wolfie. I mean, he, I felt like, was positioning himself really well in that first game, but that critical, critical miss on Slee and Cinema was absolutely heartbreaking, but...